Hey, Gary Town followers. I am going to be showing you my OSD builder task sequence. In this task sequence, it will take and use OSD builder to build the media for your updated servicing. So the task sequence itself uh, looks like this. I got my first step where I, I use it for self-documenting and I put a bunch of the instructions inside of there. Uh, and then we're recording some of the basic information to the SMSTS log, uh, just basic information, just to help for when you're troubleshooting or looking back through your logs. Uh, we also then launch the CM trace so that you can follow along with what's going on. Uh, then we're setting up some variables here. Um, then I'm stamping the site code and the management point. So the script here will reach out and grab the site code from the machine it's running from and the, the management point. Now this works great in a simple environment. If you are using a much more complex environment with like several primary sites and a CAS, you'll probably just wanna go ahead and take these and hard code them with what you would actually prefer them to be. Uh, and then I go ahead and stamp the start time. Uh, it stamps it to the registry and it's pretty simple. All right, and then going down here, um, I need to use the PowerShell commandlets for Configuration Manager. It's not a normal gallery import. Uh, the only way to get this module is to have the Config Manager console installed, but I don't necessarily want to install the console on the machines I'm running it. So I have a package, which is actually quite large, uh, which has uh, all the stuff needed to run the the PowerShell module that I need. Eventually, I'd like to go through and blog this and actually uh, pare it down to exactly what you need. Um, it has a basically just downright dirty. I just grabbed the the install folder and the bin folder, I believe it was, from the install location of the console, and threw that into a package and have it download. And then I take and I stamp the location of that package to the registry so that I know where the files are when I need to call them. Down here in the OSD builder section, I've got, uh, it detects first off to see if you have the ADK installed. Um, and if it does, it just writes out true. Or if it doesn't, it writes out false. So that's basically taking and setting this variable to true or false. Next, uh, if it's false, for instance, or not true, it will actually go ahead and uh, using these URLs, go out and download the ADK setup and the ADK WinPE setup and install them. So depending on your internet connection, this could take a little while. Uh, if you have a pretty fast pipe, it goes pretty quick overall. Uh, and then I go ahead and build out the folder structure used in for OSD builder. Uh, so I basically, I create an OS build root folder. And then from there, I populate OSD builder. The next step, we're gonna go through and uh, downloading the OSD builder module requires that I have uh, a newer version of NuGet installed. So I go ahead and do that first. Then I install OSD Builder, and then I uh, go ahead and import it, and then I update it and make sure everything's completely updated. Uh, then my next step would be to check to see if I actually have run OSD Builder in the past on this machine, and it would go through, uh, it would import the module, and then, um, I believe I need to change this around. Uh, but basically, yeah, that's not needed. Let's go ahead and fix that right now. Okay, and that's not needed either. Okay, so this is going to go ahead and attach to your config manager environment. It's going to import the OSD builder module. It's going to set where I've got it. And then it's going to go ahead and search through there to see if there's already been some 
uh, media that's been imported. If there is, I'm going to go ahead and tag the uh, and create variables for each each one that's already imported, uh, so that I can skip the imports later. All right, so down here I've got three different sections. I got one for 1809, one for 1909, and then one for Windows Server 2019, which is Server 1809. Um, so in the beginning of each section, there is a place where you have to fill out these variables. So you have to have the release ID, the upgrade package, which uh, basically just corresponds to in here. The upgrade package is this guy. So you just need to have the package ID. Uh, so in this case, it's the 2002B0. And then the OSD package, which would be operating system image. And in here, that would correspond to uh, 17. And then uh, client type is our installation type is client uh, versus a server. The image name is Windows 10 Enterprise and the edition ID is Enterprise. And these are the variables that you set so that it knows exactly which to import during your, your processes. Um, the unique ID is the installation type slash release ID. And this is used for when I'm, uh, I'm doing all the reporting. Uh, at first, I was just using release ID, and then, which worked fine when I was just doing Windows Enterprise builds. And then once I added server, because server has the same release ID as 1809, uh, I had to think of something to make it unique again. And so now I just tag on the re installation type. So this would be like client underscore 1809 uh, or client underscore 1909 or server underscore 1809. And that allows me to keep everything uh, unique and um, for reporting purposes. Uh, down here, then I go ahead and I take all that information that I've created in variables I stamp it all to the registry uh, so that it's available at the end when I need to accumulate everything and create reports. And I also have steps that I'm running as a user and not as a system. And the test sequence variables are not available when you're doing it as a run as. Um, this here is just tagging the, basically letting me know that I'm starting this section of the task sequence, so it's just easier to find. Um, and then I'm also uh, taking and writing the current time to a task sequence variable. And then uh, saying it's the start position. And down here, it's the same script, but it's just the finished position. Uh, so in here, uh, for importing the media, if uh, this earlier step, which would gather all this, if it did not find um, and set this variable to client 1809, it would then uh, actually go ahead and download the media, which you'd have to first uh, make a package with the ISO file. So that package is just a generic package. Um, and all it is, is it contains the source file. For the ISO. There it is. And so there's my path and all it is in there is the one ISO file. And that's all the packages. And that was the original downloaded media from Microsoft. So I'd recommend along the way, if Microsoft does release new uh, ISOs, to go ahead and then update it with the current version that you can get from Microsoft. All right, so then here, once it's downloaded, I have it reach out and mount that actual ISO file. And then OSD Builder will come through. And uh, based upon those variables that we set earlier, the addition, the image name, it's going to go ahead and import that media into OSD Builder. 
And then we go ahead and uh, dismount the ISO. And now LSD Builder, um, I'm going to go ahead and have it download the updates for the OSs that it finds in its repository. Then we're going to go ahead and update the media. And uh, so basically, this is going through. And this is where the ADK comes in place. In case you're running this on a s older system, um, we want to make sure that we're running the latest uh, DISM commands uh, from the ADK. Now, if you're actually running this on like a 1909 uh, workstation, this isn't really that necessary. Uh, but for consistency, to make sure that no matter which machine I ran it on, I wanted to have the ADK and using the same uh, DISM uh, version. So at this point, it's going to grab uh, the information needed so it knows which uh, media to go ahead and update. And then once it's been updated, which takes quite some time, uh, this step here um, is running as uh, this here user has rights in config manager and on the file system. So it can go ahead and reach out to config manager to pull in the information needed for the different package that we set earlier. It's going to grab uh, the package information and then it's going to go ahead and copy it over to your source server. And then what it's going to do is um, update your package information. So what you end up looking like is something like this effect here. It's going to go ahead and stamp in here the date that it was run. And then it's going to actually update your OS version. So what it's going, what it does is it actually um, tells it to um, hit this reload button for you. It's all scripted, so you don't have to. Um, and we also removed all the other indexes with OSD Builder. And it does that then for each run that you're doing. And it does it for both the upgrade packages and your OSD content. It will tag it. Ooh, and there, I need to distribute. So that's lovely. But it's going to go ahead and finish um, and do that. Oh, yeah. The last time I ran it, there was duplicates because I forgot to clear out previous test runs, which is why it aired out. So this next run, I actually cleared everything out, and which is why I needed to run it again. And I thought I'd record it, and it will actually fix all this. So at the end of this, like, seven-hour video, which I would just kind of recommend you fast forward through, um, you should be able to then uh, see. And if... I'll actually probably be sleeping when it finishes, but I'll probably do a follow-up video which goes through the, the results. Um, all right, so here uh, for uh, 1909, as you can see, it's like exactly identical. The only step that's different is the build variables where we go through in here. And now the JSON, um, for more information about this, definitely look at OSD Builder. Anything you have any questions about, um, for updating the media itself, you're going to want to look at OSD Builder's documentation. <clears throat> All of this was taken from OSD Builder's uh, documentation, and then I just fit it into to what I wanted. <clears throat> now, I'm going to be exporting this as it is, and I would highly recommend you go through it and change it for your environment. Uh, <clears throat> I keep getting slammed on Twitter for disabling .NET and excluding that because uh, where I work, we are not using 4.8 yet and we are still using 4.7 uh, so that is why i have to exclude the 4.8 from the upgrade build um, but for a lot of organizations they've gone to 4.8 so you would not want those lines in your json file uh, so it's really a great idea to go through and look at the documentation especially around the json file now, when I'm importing the media, I actually tell it to enable the NetFX feature because um, that is something that we do use, and you'd want to have that enabled uh, before you patch it. Otherwise, um, after you deploy it, if you enable .NET, uh, the NetFX feature afterward, uh, it needs to come back and repatch itself for those new capabilities that you've added. 
And then down here I go through and there's several different apps that I just yank right out of the whim, and including I disable the, the quick assist feature. Uh, and then what I'm doing here is basically writing all this inside of a um, this variable, and then I write out the variable to the OS deploy OSD builder JSON file, and that is what gets sucked in by default when you initialize OSD builder. Now I'm using the same full file for both the clients. Um, you can customize it if you have different needs. Uh, and, and this is, if you have, for instance, you need to build 1809 like two or three different times for a different line of businesses that have different needs, you could just go ahead and copy this section and make it a few times and then just go in here and change your JSON file and it will build all of them for you. Uh, and you would just have to then update your package information for each different line of business. Now down here for server, uh, the JSON file is actually uh, almost the same. I removed the uh, NetFX or the, the, the .NET uh, patch. So it will actually install 4.8 on my server build because on the servers we're okay with that apparently. Uh, otherwise, uh, all three sections are identical other than the JSON file and the build var uh, variables. Which, um, and, and for some of these, if you go into OSD Builder just in PowerShell and you start like doing dash image name, it'll actually give you the different options. So you don't have to try mounting the WIM and, and figuring it all out yourself. Um, but uh, David Segura, who wrote OSD Builder, did really great documentation. Uh, so you should be able to answer most of your questions over on his documentation. The only things that I've done is taken and shoehorned what he's done into this task sequence and uh, made it work for me. So you'll have to make sure that you set up an account that has rights in Config Manager and on the, the file structure where you're going to be putting stuff. I would not recommend using an account as powerful as I'm using in my lab. Um, but once again, <laughs> it's, it's totally up to you. Do what you will. Um, but I would highly recommend against it. And once it gets through all this, um, I have it, you know, setting the finish time. I'm cleaning up some of the registry keys that I used uh, temporarily along the way, uh, but aren't needed in, in the end. And then I go ahead and uh, mostly for troubleshooting, I was dumping every all the variables, and then I have a notification which pops up showing uh, the end of the process. So let's go ahead and kick this off. And we can uh, show you the, at least the beginning here. Uh, I'm going to show you. So you can see there is no uh, OSD uh, build folder currently. Um, and this is a, a clean image computer. There is nothing on here other than the pure basics. So let's just quick show you what that's all about. So basically, uh, Yep, and it's launching CM Trace so that you can actually watch what it's doing. Here it's downloading the, the module that I'm going to be needing for doing anything within the configuration manager, PowerShell commandlets. And here you can see this is just a clean install. Um, Laps I push down with all my clients. And then uh, as part of the CM client install, it had these. So it's it's pretty clean machine right now. I'm just going to leave that up for the moment as we watch uh, this beautiful download going here. All right. So now it's hashing. All right. So we can see that it is downloaded out that package here, which are the DLLs required for the PowerShell commandlets. And now it is going ahead, and that is just lovely. Go back to here. All right, so it has actually started building out my folder structure now. So there's nothing in OSD Builder yet, but it's already down in like two ADK files. And it is installing the ADK now. 
And let's go ahead. Yep. And so it's got that. And in a second here, we'll see it doing the WinPE portion of uh, the ADK. And, and as I showed, this is pulling straight from the internet. There's no package or content involved in these steps. Um, so every so often when new ADK comes out, you would just have to go and update those links. All right. So here, um, the resources aren't being utilized too heavily on here right now. Um, we should see this ramp up here now as it's pulling down the, the ADK from the internet. You can see it jumped up here pretty pretty good actually. It's a, I've got a pretty decent internet connection. So it's pulling down the, the WinPE add-on right now. And then we'll apply that. You can see that is installing right now. And then we'll see here momentarily when this kicks out. So let's cut over back to the task sequence here, just uh, for reference here. Did I close it? I did close it. So let me go ahead and open that back up. And we're gonna go down to task sequences, production, right here. All right. So right now we are on the step. So it, it noticed that ADK was not installed, so it went ahead and did this. So the next time I run this on this machine, um, it will skip these steps because it is not required. But basically right now it's just running this here process with my arguments, and the argument list is right here. Um, ADK arguments, so it's feature option ID, Windows pre-installation environment, slash quiet, slash no restart. And that is installing the ADK silently here for me. <clears throat> and then we're gonna build out and install. So this here should be wrapping up here momentarily. Let's check this out, well, it's still coming down. Not surprising, it's quite large. Let's see, and in the meantime, uh, let's take a look at what's going on in the registry. So all the stuff that I'm doing, I'm saving to this here OSD builder. So far it is pretty uh, plain because it hasn't gotten too far, but um, it's copied and it's at the, the PowerShell module path. So if you were to look here, this would actually be the content for that PowerShell module. Here's my site, uh, my management point, and here would be the, the site code, which the scripts will use later when it needs this information. All right, this should be wrapping up soon. Looks like it's no longer pulling anything from the internet. And my disk I.O. has gone up, so it must be applying something. I should look into making a progress bar for this. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, so now we are into installing OSD Builder. As you can see here, it is uh, going ahead and installing, um, it installed the provider NuGet, getting the version I need. And then it is installing the OSD Builder component. So we should see OSD Builder here populate really shortly with um, all the components of OSD Builder. All right. Just humming along. And on a lot of the steps, I tried to do a lot of write outputs so you could see what commands were being run. Um, and then, so you wouldn't be left in the dark. And OSD Builder was written in a way that does a lot of console output 
which will then go straight into the SMSTS log as well. So the whole process, you can just watch this log and see exactly what's going on. All right. And it is gotten away from me here. And it's already on ahead. So right here, uh, it started doing the build for 1809. It is using this upgrade media and this OSD package media. There was no previous data imported, so it's gonna go ahead and download and import the required media right now. And then a couple timestamps. All right. And so here it created the folder. So if you go back here, yep, as you see, it's all been populated out now. And it's pulling down content from that package. And here we are. And then momentarily, we should see the import process take place. Let's see, we don't need this anymore. And let's see, do we have any change here? Yep, cool. All right, so now in registry here, we have our client 1809 installation type. And then we have our start time with the package. So if it doesn't have like the unique ID tagged afterward, basically these are just temporary keys that it is using during this group. And then it will delete these later leaving the ones that have the unique ID attached onto it as well. And here would be like the unique ID for 1809, this client 1809, and that just gets tagged on to the different things as we're going along. All right, so now it's gonna hash, which will also take a minute while it's uh, doing that. All right. This VM is hosted on uh, my HP ZBook has uh, eight gigs of RAM. I've got eight processors, virtual processors dedicated to it. And uh, it's running on an NVMe one terabyte drive. And overall, I I'm pretty happy with the performance here. All right, so there it is. Copy that package now to the CCM cache. So it will actually still be staged there in the future if it's needed. Uh, typically it isn't. So here we're going is importing. As you can see up here, uh, it is using uh, my JSON file that was built. So it's importing the JSON, which is where then you see all of these uh, extra items being added, the import NetFX, the update OSX exclude, um, and then the different uh, apps that are being pulled out. And uh, this is really cool to me because I had some requests needed to make this all possible. And uh, David Segura went ahead and uh, built those into his tool so that I could automate this a little bit easier using a task sequence. Um, this is all definitely doable outside of a task sequence. Um, I just really am comfortable in a task sequence scenario, which is why I've done it this way. Um, but you can see now it's it's uh, mounted the install WIM and it's going ahead and importing this. And this is where I'm going to cut out because this process uh, can take hours now before we get to anything that's more interesting um, it's just going to do its thing it's going to run through and uh, import this media and then it's going to go ahead and update it and this process for a very old version of 1809 will probably take three to four or five hours just for 1809 and um, then it's going to go ahead and do it for 1909 and for server 1809 and so this whole process I would imagine taking near like the 10 hour mark or so uh, which is why it'll probably end while I'm sleeping so I'm just gonna let this go ahead and, and record and I will catch up with you guys uh, tomorrow which will seem probably a little bit quicker but so you might be able to uh, find this interesting I'm gonna leave this up and as the log spins you'll be able to keep track of what's actually going on uh, so feel free to fast forward, rewind, pause, see what's going on here in the log. Um, I've tried to be as detailed as possible. So it can still be a value here, but then feel free. I'll, um, not sure if I'm going to post a second video 
or try to uh, merge the two into one if I can get fancy. Uh, thanks. So I will catch you later.
I w welcome back. Uh, it's the next morning for me. Uh, I still have this all up though from from last night. And uh, so right here it shows test sequence error. Uh, I'm just using the error dialog box for uh, reporting purposes. So that is uh, the last step of my test sequence that triggers this. Um, but then I have it show it goes through and figures out all the different things that were that were run. So my client 1809 and 1909 server 2019, which is 1809, uh, it tells you the the uh, build record that it was updated to, and then the two different packages, and then the amount of time that elapsed during those runs. So for 1809, it actually took uh, 225 minutes. Um, so these are in minutes, not like two hours and 25. So as you can see, the whole process took 513 minutes. I mean, so that's over 10 hours there that that took uh, to do this entire process, which is why you just want to start it and walk away. Um, let's take a look at the registry here, to see uh, what's going on. We'll refresh that. And as you can see, all, all the different data that's been in here. Um, a lot of the data was written here so that these, this here dialog box could be uh, created. It actually uh, sucks in all this data and then does the math to create the different timestamps inside of here. Um, and, and that's why we also needed that unique uh, ID for each machine, um, which would be the unique ID client so that it can keep everything straight when it's pulling everything in. So this here will actually get wiped out the next time you run it. it one of the first steps, it will clear this out and start fresh. Um, and then if we go over here to OSD Builder, you can see that my folders are here. And it has uh, the three different builds are completed now. So let's take a look at the console. Well, first, uh, so that last step, is uh, it's this pretty long PowerShell script. Um, there's a function here uh, for the TS environment, which uh, is on GitHub. And I'll make sure that I actually add the link into the uh, description field here. Uh, so if you want to uh, see the original code for this, you can. And then basically what I've just done is uh, here at the bottom of it, I call the function and then start putting all this other stuff in. Um, and <laughs> so this is the code here that creates that dialog box. And then it stays open for um, well, 60,000 seconds. All right, let's close that. All right, so back over here, um, we will go to operating system images. And now this should show that it was built last night and and into the morning hours. And you can see it's now been uh, deployed properly. It has updated the DPs automatically as well. And so it's got the timestamp and the OS versions. Let's go over here to our upgrade packages. Um, so we've got 18.9, in the server and the timestamps that those were created. And those two have been successfully updated and uh, pushed out to the DPs automatically. And also the OS versions have been updated to reflect what the new builds are. And with that, uh, let me know if you have any questions. And I hope that this was useful to you. And uh, OSD Builder, it's got to love it.